Have you ever had a project that you knew that you needed to do, but at the same time you knew it was just gonna be awful? That's where I'm at right now. Oh, we're leaking oil bad. We're leaking oil real bad. After the last video where I noticed a giant oil leak coming from my oil pan, I put in an order for a brand new gasket, but I know that this process is about to be so much worse than I could ever imagine. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're replacing the oil pan gasket on my Camaro. Now, we're gonna try and do this without pulling the engine out of the car. I have a couple different ways that I think that I might be able to do this, including dropping the oil pan just a couple inches, sneaking the oil pan gasket underneath the crankshaft, and pulling it up on the other side, and hopefully that will allow us to install this without taking the entire engine out of the car, or at least without having to lift it a significant amount. Now obviously in order to get the oil pan gasket replaced we're going to have to get the oil out of the oil pan. So let's start with draining the pan into our little bucket underneath. This is officially the first oil change that I've done on the new engine since the rebuild and install so that's pretty cool. I didn't notice any chunks of metal or anything odd that would end up in the oil so that is a really really good sign that the engine is running properly and we don't have strange little metal shards everywhere. Now once the oil pan is done draining, we're going to go ahead and plug it up and start unbolting the oil pan from the bottom of the engine. Now a lot of people probably don't know that a lot of the old GM cars were really easy to remove the oil pans on. The cross member for the engine was about 6 inches further forward on a lot of their other vehicles, and for some reason the Camaro got it 6 inches pushed back, which made it literally impossible to remove the oil pan without doing a lot of finicky work here. But after all of the oil pan bolts were out, we were able to get it to drop down about three inches. Now that's not a lot of clearance when you're working with an engine, but it was enough to give me hope that I could actually slide the oil pan gasket under the crankshaft and pull it up on the other side, and we wouldn't need to pull the whole oil pan out. But before I was willing to put any gasket anywhere near this engine, we had to prep the surfaces, which meant rubbing everything down with lacquer thinner. Now a lot of people use a lot of different things for this, but I like to lacquer thinner. It's pretty cheap, it's good to pour on a rag, and you can just wipe everything down with it. It's relatively clean, makes the process really easy, and it allowed me to prep the block and the oil pan surfaces for the new gasket to go in. So with the gasket surfaces properly prepped, it was time to see if I could thread the gasket through underneath the crankshaft and pull it up on the other side to get the gasket lined up and able to be installed. Now if you're following along and you want to try and do this yourself, do not pause the video and go do it right now. This did not work. I'm just going to tell you that right now. This concept of threading it down underneath was the single worst idea I've had in the entire time of working on this car, and I will explain why momentarily. But I wanted to get it out of the way that if anyone is actually following this, do not follow in my footsteps. It is not as easy as it sounds. Now, the biggest problem that I ran into while trying to do this was the fact that I could not get it low enough into the oil pan to clear the oil pickup. Now, that should have been a no-brainer from the beginning, knowing the anatomy of an engine, but for some reason, I brain farted and just could not remember the fact that it was there. So, I spent almost an hour struggling to pull it through and just kept getting hung up on the oil pickup every single time. I wasted tons of time attempting to do this, and I definitely don't recommend it. So, after inevitably failing to do this for about an hour and a half going into two hours, I decided, let me see if I can lift the engine up just a little bit, and hopefully that will give me enough clearance to fit the oil pan gasket through. I'm lifting it just enough to give myself more clearance, but not high enough to warrant taking anything off, adjusting the motor mounts, or worst case, breaking something. It was just a couple extra inches to let me feed the gasket through, and this actually worked. Now, even though lifting it up a little bit more gave me the clearance to feed the gasket through, it was still getting really dirty and oily as I pulled it through, and that's not great for sealing. But I figured, it's a big one-piece gasket, it's better than the nasty old cork ones that I had on there, and so I decided to start moving forward and try aligning everything by putting some bolts in. And I'll just let this speak for itself. If you guessed that that was the sound of me dropping an oil pan bolt down inside of the oil pan, you would be correct. 
So now I was left with literally no choice other than to pull the whole oil pan off because there was no other way that I was going to be able to get that bolt out. So I proceeded to unbolt the motor mounts, take the bolts out, and lift it the rest of the way up to finally give myself the clearance needed to pull the entire oil pan off the engine. <laughs> Well, we're finally in the end game of replacing this oil pan gasket. As you saw, I had to hoist the engine up a couple inches out of the engine bay just to get enough clearance to finally pull that oil pan. I tried just about everything that I could to get this thing out, and it's finally out. So, lesson learned, if you just do it right the first time, you'll probably get it done a lot quicker. So the next steps here is I'm gonna clean all of the surfaces again with my lacquer thinner, get all the oil and gunk off of them, and then I'm gonna fix the gasket because we got it a little bit bent up. We're gonna put the proper RTV on all of the corners and hopefully we can just stick the oil pan back up under the block and everything goes easy. But we all know how that usually goes, so fingers crossed. So once again, we start wiping everything down with the lacquer thinner and then move on to dabbing RTV on the corners where all of these gasket surfaces are gonna meet. So on the four corners of the oil pan and then also we put RTV on the four corners of the block. And that just helps make sure that we get a really, really good seal when this oil pan gasket goes in. That is the failure point that I had last time and the entire reason that I have to deal with this. So I am going a little bit overboard on the RTV in hopes that I never have to do this again. So rolling ourselves back underneath the engine with the gasket stuck down to the oil pan surface, we're gonna slowly wedge it back up into place. And this actually went surprisingly well. I was able to move it into place under the block really, really easily. And as I slowly wiggled it around to get it fully aligned on the block, I started putting in the big four corner bolts just to hold the oil pan up. Now these were not snugged down immediately because I wanted to make sure that we could still align the rest of the bolts and the gasket as we put the smaller bolts in. So then we started with the inside out bolting method and went one by one installing all of the small oil pan bolts until we had the oil pan fully seated back in the car. Whew! We finally got the oil pan back on. It is RTV'd, it's sealed, it's bolted back in place, and we finally have it in. Now I have to struggle for the next hour probably to get the motor to sit properly back on its motor mounts. So I'll see you guys in a brief second. And here we are a few minutes later, we've got the motor back on the mounts, everything is back where it needs to be, and our oil pan install is completed. Now I am going to wait 48 hours for the RTV to completely seal, because I did not do that last time and I think that's what caused my problem. So in 48 hours we'll be putting clean oil back in, a new oil filter, and giving it another test drive to see if we fixed our leak. But if you guys want to see that video, you're going to have to wait until the next one because this video is over. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys next time. C